Hello, and welcome to Assurity's podcast, Tips from the Insurance Pros. In this series, we talk with sales pros as they share ideas and insights that you can use today. I'm your host, Matt, and today I'm here once again with Chet Marco of Texas Family Health Plans. Chet's going to discuss the massive need for critical illness insurance and how you can grow your own CI sales. Chet, we are glad to have you back on the show. Well, I'm glad to be back. For those listeners who might have missed your first podcast with us, could you share a bit about your background? Yeah, I've been a health insurance broker for over 25 years, and we handle all the major medicals. We handle health share, and we do worksite products. We do a lot of business with the surety, critical illness. Uh, we love their products. They've worked really well for us. Let's talk about critical illness insurance, uh, and let's start at the beginning of the sale, the prospecting. How do you prospect for CI clients? Are networking and referrals a part of your process? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's been a bit of a, a process over the years. You know, we used to spend a tremendous amount of money on leads. I mean, we were spending, you know, just for me, $800 uh, a week. And, you know, $800 a week in leads would probably produce two or $3,000 in business. But, man, that was a lot of money. And one day I just kind of got irritated, you know, because I was seeing a lot of the same leads coming back around. And it always seemed, you know, to be the same type of people that would say yes to a telemarketer. And, you know, it began to kind of wear me out. And so one day I was kind of upset about it. And I said, you know, I'm going to go out and try something different. Um, I'm going to go out and canvas. Mm -hmm. And so I really perfected that. And my goal every week was to go out and shake hands with 100 businesses. And, you know, I do that on Mondays. And what was interesting, you know, canvassing is kind of a, an old art and everybody's like, oh, nobody does that anymore. But I, I'll tell you what, I've had tremendous success with it. You know, we'll go out, you know, my goal is to walk in, hand my card, hand a flyer to these, you know, businesses and just walk in and say hello and ask them three questions. Who are you doing healthcare with? How much is it costing you? And are you happy with what you got? And it's amazing. Nobody's happy. And, you know, nobody's happy with their health care. And people are desperate to talk to somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. And nobody goes around and talks to businesses anymore. And I found what I try to do is keep it short and sweet. I go in, try not to waste their time. You know, I ask them a few questions and, and then I say, listen, I, I know I can help you. But I'll tell you what, you're busy, I'm busy. Let me get your name and number and a little bit of information from you. And let me get some quotes together and we'll find a time that we both can get together and that it will work. And I'll go out and hit 100 businesses and get 15 to 20 solid leads off of canvassing, you know, 100 businesses. I mean, good leads. And it's worked really well for me. And I find that when I go through an area – uh, the first time I go through, you know, I'll get 15, and I'll go through the same area again a year, two years later, and I'll get the same amount. And when people see you two or three times come by, you almost become a friend the third time you go through there. Yeah. And they begin to realize, you know, who you are and what you do. But the, the good thing is, is when you canvas, you're going to get those people that would never respond to a telemarketer. And I find if I go in, just spend a couple minutes, hand them the information and respect their time. So when I call back, I'm a warm call. You know, I'm, I'm the big guy that was in your office the other day. And it's not like I'm a telemarketer calling. I'm a local guy. And it's been very successful for us. The other thing we do a lot of is try to build spheres of influence. Talk to accountants. Talk to PNC dealerships, there's a ton of them out there. Talk to doctors, talk to chiropractors, talk to the people that have, you know, books of business and let them know how you can help their clients. Let them know, you know, especially on the PNC, sometimes they're a little nervous to let you in on their group of business, but let them know, you know, 
it doesn't help me to mess you over. Uh, I want a long-term relationship. You know, I'll refer people to you. You refer people to me. And it's amazing how many referrals I get just from building those relationships. You know, if I got somebody that's a good PNC guy, once every couple months I may go by and take him to lunch or something like that just to keep my name out in front of him, you know, so when somebody does call say, hey, do you know anybody that does health insurance that, you know, Chet Marco is the guy they, they, they call. And just doing good business, doing right by your clients, uh, you'll build up a referral. The neat thing on the, uh, on the canvassing is if you're putting out 100 flyers a week, you know, and you get your 15 good leads, well, that's 85 other people that got your flyer and maybe stuck it in the file, and you may get a call from them two years later. And five years down the road, you realize how many flyers you put out, and, you know, you're getting referral business off of stuff you did two years ago. You know, it's, it's really exciting. That is fantastic. Those uh, personal relationships are a phenomenal way to build up a good book of business. Now, I remember the last time you were on the show talking about critical illness. You mentioned young people as a good market for CI insurance. Uh, how do you prospect specifically for younger clients? Well, you know, the problem with younger clients is they all think they're bulletproof. <laughs> mm-hmm. They all think they're bulletproof, and, you know, sometimes they haven't had enough life experience to know that they have a need for health care. You know, I think sometimes it's when people get in their 30s or something like that and they've actually had a few friends go down. But sometimes it's just telling that young kid, listen, you know, we never know when something's going to happen. And when it does happen, if you don't have health care, you know, your life can be ruined financially. And and you don't want to be in that. So sometimes, you know, we have to act kind of like, you know, the elderly parents, reminding them that life isn't so easy. Curveballs are thrown, things happen, and things happen to young people all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Moving on, a big conversation happening in insurance right now, and specifically in CI, rising health care costs. And those are a great conversation starter when selling CI insurance. So how do you go about talking about rising health care costs with your clients? How do you start that conversation? Well, I have a saying that there's, in chaos, there's opportunity. And right now, I don't think the market has been more out of control than it is right now. And as an agent, the thing that is absolutely so crazy is, you know, I go in and sell a group or I go in and sell an individual policy, major medical, and the next year I come back and guess what? Your premiums have gone up anywhere from 10 to 30%. And you either pay the extra money or you lower your benefits. And, you know, it's kind of a insane cycle to be in because, you know, these people, they're super frustrated by, you know, in the group side, uh, you know, to ensure a family is anywhere from 1400 to $2,000 a month. And you go, what average Joe can afford that? You know, so a lot of times I walk into these businesses and say, hey, I can play the game with you. I handle all those products. And guess what? You're going to have uh, – you know, a 7900 out of pocket on that plan. Now, let, let me ask you a question, sir. How, how many of your employees could actually come up with 7900 if something bad happened? And, you know, you just see the owner start to shake his head. You know, he's frustrated. He knows, knows he's frustrated. And I go, and then you ask him, you go, are, are you really helping your, your employees if you give them something they can't afford with an out-of-pocket they can't afford, and some of these people are looking at almost thirty thousand. You know, when you add the premiums up and you add the out of pocket, that they'd be out of pocket thirty thousand if they had anything major happen. But now we built in these other products that help them uh, when they get into that crisis situation. So instead of this healthcare being a product that's unreachable or you know having out of pockets they can't meet, now we have products that we add in 
that will absolutely turn their lives around when they have that crisis. I've got a client right now, good client. She's been a client for a long time. And they were on a health share with a, had a 1500 out of pocket. And when they, they just got diagnosed with a severe cancer, and I put $50,000 worth of critical illness on. So not only are they on the health care product only going to be out of pocket 1500 but they had 50000 in critical illness. Well, now they're going to make 48500 and they're like, God, I'm so glad. And they didn't want to take it. And, and I talked them into taking it. And sometimes we have to realize that we will absolutely turn these people's lives around if they have a bad health crisis because them having that extra 48500 means that they can afford to take off time from work because they have the extra money now on the side to pay for their time off, to pay their car trip, to pay their hotel costs, to, you know, pay for babysitters to watch the kids while they run down to MD Anderson in Houston. I mean, there's so much expense in, in a crisis thing, and, and most of it's just your life gets turned upside down. My, my dad had a small heart attack, had a triple bypass. He was an OBGYN in Houston, and um, he was unable to work for five months. And well, when you're an OBGYN, you are the business. If you're not working, all these other people in the office depend on you to be there and to do your job. And when you're not there, the job doesn't get done. So many businesses are three to four employees, and the owner is the one that brings in the business that keeps everybody busy. And if he goes down, there's a lot of people going to get hurt in the process. So the idea of critical illness I call it almost like a mini disability policy. You know, you get 50000 in money that's there to keep you from having to sell your trucks and sell your equipment and putting you out of business because you flat can't use that stuff to make a living. So critical illness is a must sell. You really, you've got to take the time to educate your clients on critical illness because I have yet to have a client that had a major situation that wasn't absolutely so happy you know, that they had that money to make it through that crisis. I'm doing really well. Uh, this has been a good business. You know, information is power. In chaos, there's opportunity. And, you know, when you're the guy with the answers, you're going to get their attention. And people are desperate for answers right now. If you can go in there with the information and get their attention, then you've, you've got their business for life. That is a great point that you bring up right there. Right. Now, changing uh, tack just a little bit, you meet with a lot of people between your canvassing and your referrals and regular client meetings. So what can brokers do to build better relationships with their clients? The biggest thing you can do to retain clients is let them know that you are there for them. My persistency is extremely high. And the reason why my persistency is extremely high is because people feel like I'm shooting straight with them and that I'm going to be there for them when they have this crisis. And one of the sad things about this business is agents are terrible about taking care of their clients. And, you know, some people are like, well, Chet, why are you such a good agent? And I said, because I answer my phone, you know, because I do what I say I'm going to do. Uh, I take care of my clients. And if I have a problem, you know, if I made a mistake, I own it. Kind of a deal. And character is something that has been lost. I've seen some of the best insurance, I mean, best salesmen I've ever seen not make it in insurance. And the reason why they don't make it is because they can't do business day in, day out, day in, day out. Like on my canvassing, it's 100 on, on Monday. I make my phone calls on Tuesday. I set my appointments for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I follow the same pattern. And so the secret to being successful in this business is loving on your clients and consistently doing the same thing week after week. You know, everybody has asked me, what's the secret of being successful in, in, in selling insurance? And I said, learning how to manage your time. That's it. 
if you manage your client time and treat it like a 40-hour-a-week job and get out there and make money, you'll have a great business. If you don't, you will fail. And, you know, I'm at a point now where, you know, I've been in this business a long time. I've got over 3,000 clients, and my mailbox money is awesome. I do very well. And the only way you can get there is by learning to consistently manage your time, know your products, uh, love on your clients. I'm, out, I'm at a point in my career where I get a ton of referrals. But, you know, that's 25 years of doing what I was supposed to do. It's amazing when you look back, if you can do the consistently do the same thing over and over and over again for five, ten years, you'll look back and go, oh, my gosh, look what I created. You know, unbelievable. And, um, and you make a lot of your money by selling the Assurity products. You know, you have those in. They've got great renewals. It's great mailbox money. Uh, it's where you add this stuff on and make a good living. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think consistency and dedication are 100% a big part of the key to success. And I think you brought up a valuable point about education as well in that uh, sometimes giving your client the answer isn't as important as making yourself a resource for those answers. Right. So you, you bring up a lot of very good points there, Chet. I want to go to something that you uh, alluded to earlier when you were talking about uh, group sales. Uh, you were talking about cross-selling different products, and I want to talk about specifically uh, critical illness insurance and life insurance. Uh, what kind of success are you having pairing CI and life insurance sales? And uh, what sort of tips can you share with producers that are looking to do the same? On the individual side, what I do is when I go in there with HealthShare or Maze and Medical or whatever, I have two quotes. And if you have a critical illness quote, and then you have a life quote with critical illness added on. And so I will put anywhere from three hundred dollars to $500,000 with the life add to critical illness. Now, when you go look at the difference in costs between a straight-out critical illness plan and a life plan with critical illness, there's not a whole lot of difference in price. You know, so what I'll do is I'll go in there and I'll present the CI. And once I get them to buy it on the CI, I go, I don't know if you know this or not, but did you know I can add $300,000 worth of life onto this policy, onto your CI policy for 30 bucks or 70 bucks? And they go, really? That's it? And it's, it's really, I mean, it, when you compare it, uh, the life with the CI, you know, the difference in premiums is hardly any. And so when you tell them what you're doing, is you're saying you tell them the difference in the price. So if it's 30 bucks or 50 bucks, you say, hey, I can give you $500,000, $300,000 worth of extra life insurance for, you know, for $30, $50. And they go, wow, that's not very much. Yeah, go ahead and add that on. Because, you know, you just saved them a ton of money. And, you know, that's the problem I have with agents a lot of times. They say, listen, guys, we're not selling price. We're selling value. They may hate what they're paying, but the reason why they hate what they're paying is because they don't think it's worth the price. Now, if I can offer them lower out-of-pocket CI and life for less than what they're paying, do you think they see the value in that? Absolutely. And, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a a last-minute throw-in, and it is amazing how many times those people will tell you, yeah, go ahead and add that on. I need, I need, need some life insurance. And I don't, I don't know what it is, but people have kind of an aversion. They'll talk about health insurance all day long, but life insurance is something that's a little bit of a – they don't want to go there until you won them over and you tag it on on the end of the sale. And I've had a lot of success doing that and getting life added on. And when you, if you sell just CI, the commission on that product is lower than life plus the CI. You get, you get paid on the life insurance commission. And I don't know what y'all's life insurance commission is, but it's more than CI, I promise you that. So all of a sudden now, you get a lot more money when you do the life CI combo over just the CI combo. Uh, the renewals aren't as good. Regular simple CI has better renewals, but life in CI has a lot better upfront money. 
Well, Chad, you have been an absolute wealth of information. I'd like to thank you once again for joining us today. Uh, do yeah. you have anything more you'd like to add for our uh, listeners before you uh, sign off? You know, Surety is a great company, and I've been, the more and more I get to know them, the more and more I, I love them. My rep is Paige Phillips, and these guys have been there for me anytime I needed help. And uh, they've been, they've helped educate me. And, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize the wealth of information and help they have at Assurity. You know, I've been out in the field and I'll call customer service and they'll give me a, a quote right over the phone. Anytime I've called where I've had a, a problem with a client, they've been on top of it calling me back. And guys, companies like Assurity, you know, I've represented a, a lot of companies over the years, and Surety is by far one of the best ones out there. They're, they listen. They're, they've got great trips. They've uh, got great products. I've never had a problem with them paying me, and they're very loyal to their agents. I, I've loved the relationship, you know, and I, I don't see myself ever doing business anywhere else, even if they offered me more money. And so I, I really do. Surety is a, a, an incredible company, and I've really enjoyed working with them. Well, Chad, we're glad to work with you, too. And thank you again for sharing all of your yeah. incredibly valuable insights here. I'm sure our listeners will definitely get a lot from hearing your advice. And to our listeners... Thank you so much for tuning in to Assurity's Tips from the Assurance Pros. To learn more about Assurity's critical illness, contact your regional sales team or email us at podcast at assurity.com and we'll be happy to connect you with a representative. Thanks for listening. For producer use only, not for use with the general public, not for use in New York. Assurity is a marketing name for the mutual holding company Assurity Group Incorporated and its subsidiaries. Those subsidiaries include, but are not limited to, Assurity Life Insurance Company and Assurity Life Insurance Company of New York. Insurance products and services are offered by Assurity Life Insurance Company in all states except New York. In New York, insurance products and services are offered by Assurity Life Insurance Company of New York, Albany, New York. Product availability, features, and rates may vary by state.